Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teacher Crimsy again, and today I come out of my crypt to offer you yet another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will dive into the process of creating horror manga pages, but more specifically, how to use eight different rulers and special rulers in order to create effects like surprise and fast movement, as well as create simple objects, symmetry and perspective, among other things. I have sketched two manga pages just for the occasion, and what I'd like to do today is simply bring you along as I ink these pages and use the aforementioned rulers in my workflow to give you some ideas as to how you can use them in your own. Basically, the ruler tool set in Clip Studio Paint can create multiple types of curves which serve as guides for your pen stroke to snap and trace onto. So let's start with our panels. When creating panels, there are two tools I like to use. First, we have the line tools, or figure tools, as they're called in CSP, but these tools only do uniform lines, so I'll pick the rectangle option and use it for the main frame of the page, but when it comes to the inner panels, I'd like to go for the second option I like, which is the curve ruler. With the curve ruler, I can create the shape of my panel by selecting the straight line option, holding down the left mouse button and pressing shift to get a straight line and releasing shift when I need a certain angle. When you get to the last line, a dot will appear and once you click on it, the two lines will fuse together and complete your shape. What I like with this option is that you can then pick up the pen tool and it will snap on your panel line and allow you to play with the thickness of the lines, which gives your panel a much more dynamic look, I think. Feel free to right-click on the ruler symbol and toggle the show ruler on and off to see the results without the purple line. This also entirely deactivates your ruler so you can freehand on the same layer if you wish. Now just let me do the same for all the panels, including our second page. Alright, now that we have interesting looking panels, let's dive into the content of those panels. There is not so much I can add to the first panel, seeing as it's a close-up of the character's face, but for the second panel, it looks a bit empty, so let's grab the linear ruler and create a few reference lines to simulate a window frame, which will provide more interesting lighting and composition to our panel. With the linear ruler, you can click and drag any number of lines onto your canvas and use your pen tool to trace along these lines. Note that all these lines are disconnected from each other and the pen may only trace as far as the lines goes, as well as only snap onto one line at a time, depending on which line is the nearest to your pen. Alright, this looks more interesting in my opinion, so let's go ahead and ink the main character in the first four panels. I'd like to use this moment to remind you that I have made two other Clip Studio Paint tutorials, so if you would like to learn how to create seamless patterns for your art projects, or would like to learn how to create and customize your very own brushes, including brushes that imitate the appearance of traditional mediums, then make sure to check out my Clip Studio Paint tutorial playlist. I will likely make more of these in the future as well, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any fun or creepy video I'm gonna make in the future, and with all that said, let's get back into the tutorial. Tutorial. With the first three panels complete, we can now move on to the fourth panel, and for this one, I'd like to get this kind of surprise effect that's very typical in mangas, where you have all your lines converging in the center of your image, just to make it more dramatic. You can try to freehand it, of course, but the results won't look very clean or professional. So what I would rather do is go back to the ruler tab, select the special ruler option, and with this ruler, you'll notice here that we have a drop-down menu with multiple options to choose from. We will be using four of these in today's video, but all in due time. Now we only need to select the radial line option, and then all that's left to do is to click wherever we want our center of attention to be, and it will create this purple symbol which will then become our guide. So let's try and do a couple lines until we feel like the effect looks nice. In this case, I feel like less is more, so I'm only gonna do a few lines. Alright, I think that's it. The shocked look on her face is as dramatic as it can ever be, so let's move on to our next panel. Actually, I just noticed this, but in our second panel, I drew a few straight lines in the window by reflex just to create this reflective glass effect. But if you go right here in the special ruler settings, there is this parallel line option that we can select and it's so much better to create this kind of effect, especially if you're someone who struggles at drawing straight lines in general. Simply drag the curve on a new layer, keep holding down the left mouse button until you get the angle right, and then release it. It will generate you a thick purple line, and 
once again, this will be your guide when tracing the lines. So let's just do a few lines, reduce the opacity a bit when we're happy with the result, and there you go! Now your lines are perfectly parallel to each other, and it looks much more cleaner, I think. Now that the top four panels are done, we're down to one last panel for this page, and this one is for the close-up of the grisly content of our character's cup. In order to make the cup she's holding, you can go in the figure tool menu and drag a circle inside the panel. But once again, you will only get a uniform line, and we're striving for a more natural hand-drawn look than that, so let's go back in the rulers menu and click on the figure ruler option. With the figure ruler, you can create various shapes like circles and rectangles, and with the polygon shape, you get the option to customize the amount of sides in your shape, so you can make triangles, pentagons, etc. These shapes can also add up, so they're perfect for drawing objects of all kinds. So first, let's select the circle option and drag it until the shape fits our sketch. For the border of the cup, I created three circles, traced over them with the pen tool, and then erased the unnecessary parts. Then I picked up the curve ruler again and used it to draw the curved body of the cup by switching from the straight line option to the spline option. I repeated the same process for the cup handle too, but for the liquid inside the cup, I used the figure ruler again. Note that you can apply regular transformations to this specific ruler if you want to slightly modify the shape or the size of it, if needed. And the same goes for the eyeball. After all that was done, I then went ahead and started inking the ends and all the remaining details and proceeded to draw all the shading too. So, I think we could say that with the final touches and slight modifications to the panels, we now have a pretty solid first manga page. There is only one last ruler that I wanted to show you guys in this page, and it's only a small detail, but I thought it was a really nice example in this case, and it's to add a simple ripple effect in the surface of our liquid here. To create this effect, all you must do is go back to the rulers menu, select the special ruler option, and in the drop down menu, choose concentric circle. Then simply left click and drag the circle from the center of the cup up until the edge of the liquid. And without moving your mouse, because we don't want any rotation, left click once again to validate its position. Finally, draw some lines on the surface to simulate some ripples on water, and you will notice that the pen can only draw the strokes in accordance with our purple circle guide. Leave some space between the lines for a better effect. You can also reduce its opacity if you want, duplicate the layer and blur it to add some shine to the water, and that's it! This is how I created ripple effects in Clip Studio. Pretty simple. Now, let's restore the opacity of the speech bubbles and see how it looks. I think our first page looks pretty nice, honestly, I'm very happy with it. But with all that said, we still have our second page to finish and two more rulers to play with. So let's jump right ahead and get to it! I took the liberty of also inking the first panel in the second page, seeing as it mostly repeats the concept and tools we've already covered in this video, and once that was done, I also used the parallel option in the special ruler tool to create movement in the panel. I finished the panel by adding a spiky speech bubble with an exclamation and interrogation point, and I believe now that our character is as surprised as she'll ever be, so let's move on to our pièce de résistance. The second before last ruler I want to show you is the perspective ruler. We don't need it for anything too complex right now, it's only to draw a few lines for the walls and the window, but I thought it was important that I at least showed it to you, just so you know it's there and how to use it. Let's go back to the ruler tools and select the perspective ruler. Start your first line by left clicking near the top line of your wall and release the mouse when you get the desired angle. And repeat the same step for the second line to form an X on your screen. Basically, the point where the two lines cross become your center and the wider you make the angle difference between the two lines and the more intense your perspective will be. Note that your lines will always converge towards your center when working with one point perspective. So keep that in mind when thinking about the composition of your scene. In the context of our room here, we want the viewer to be able to get a sense of scale through the environment. In this scenario, the creature is much bigger than our main character, so by showing part of the ceiling and how big the room is, we allow the viewer to truly capture just how terrifying this monster is. After I was done sketching the room, I scaled it up a bit, lowered the ceiling level even more, and that was pretty much it for my use of the one-point perspective ruler. 
Finally, I went ahead and lowered the opacity of our room so we could get into inking part of our creature using our final ruler, the symmetry ruler. In order to use this one, simply go in the rulers menu and select the symmetrical ruler. Left click in the center of the face where you want the symmetry to originate from and drag your mouse to create the desired angle. You can also hold shift if you want a straight or 45 degrees angle. As you can see, now when we trace our lines, the symmetry holds up perfectly. But there is still one issue that most people will have at this point, and it's the fact that the eraser tool will not be working along with the symmetry tool. And that's pretty problematic, especially if you want to draw a whole illustration using symmetry. Lucky for you, the fix to this is very easy. Simply select your eraser, click on the subtool menu icon here, and once the subtool menu window opens, all you need to do is go to the correction tab and check the enable snapping box. Now close the window, start erasing a few things and everything should work perfectly. Now let's do some inking for a bit and finish up our page. In the context of this page, I was feeling very inspired by an old monster design that I had made a few years ago, and I thought it would be perfect for this manga, so I just reused it, but somehow made it a lot worse. I have to say, making this tutorial was super fun and I really hope that even if you are not a huge horror fan in general, you will still be able to make good use of the tools that I showed you today and still make some awesome manga pages with them anyway. Let me know if you found this tutorial helpful in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video of course, it helps support the channel in return. By the way, there's a lot going on right now on my side so a lot of new stuff is going to be announced soon and there's several projects I want to show you guys, so stay tuned for that in our next video where I'll explain all of that, but for now, that's it for me. I'm going back to my crypt and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, au revoir!